Hi everyone, welcome back to Camnet Studio. In this episode, we are going to proceed in our journey in understanding ceramic basics. More specifically, we're going to dedicate this episode to understand better how to describe pottery. If you haven't seen the first episode, here is a link. Take a look at that before starting. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, guys, before starting, I just want to make clear that we are going to take into consideration a few terms, a few technical terms, the jargon behind pottery description, but we're going to take a more in-depth look at these in the following video, okay? So a few are going to be mentioned now, the major ones, the more complex ones in the next video. Okay, let's start. So, our first point why we describe pottery. Now I have, as I said in the first video, I described, I tried to analyze why pottery is so important. So as once again, take a look at that video. But I want to underline uh, the main reasons why we decide so much to describe pottery and archaeology, why it's so important. Well, mainly because we have the need to give thesis. No, I'm just kidding. Yes, a lot of times that's the best thing to do. Give a selection of pottery to a student and make him do his own uh, thesis or doctoral thesis or whatever it is. But apart from that, we need this, uh, the seriation, the classification, the creation of a typology in order to understand what is present in that context, in our excavation. The amount to have statistics on the different aspects, for example, different types of wear, uh, how many open and closed shapes we have, what kind of surface treatment, all things we're going to take a look in this video. And as I said, also from a term point of view in the next one. So it's paramount for a chronological point of view, for a cultural point of view, to create interactions among other sites. It's just the fundamental basis basics of this type of uh, inquiry, investigation, scientific analysis of uh, a context. This is a huge part. If we're talking about context, that includes pottery. Otherwise, clearly not. Okay, let's proceed now and let's try to understand what are the main instruments we need to do this. It's, it's not something difficult, but we do need a series of instruments in order to properly describe our pottery. So, as I said, in most cases, we're going to have a, a huge amount of pottery, probably already selected. Maybe you're at the beginning of an excavation, you have no idea, so you're describing everything, and you're trying to understand what you have. And in fact, one of the key concepts is that of wares, which we're going to see in the next video. And maybe, hence, at that point, the description is even more important because you're trying to understand a new type of production. This is just to keep in mind how important this is. The main instruments we need are just a few. They, they fit on a hand, we could say. One, a source of light. This is very important. It has to be a stable source of light, possibly neutral, towards white, not too warm, not too yellowish. I will put here the correct amount of Kelvin, so you know exactly what will be the best. Clearly, uh, when you're abroad and you're in difficult situations, uh, trying to describe pottery, uh, like I lived several times, it's not that easy to find something uh, precise and constant. In fact, a lot of people describe uh, their pottery using sunlight, because that's a constant. You're always going to have that same type of light during a certain amount of period of time during the date, clearly. So if you can't have that, it's better to have a source of light possibly coming from the same direction with a neutral type of warmth. Okay, another important fundamental, I would say, element tool in order to have a description that can be understood also by other people is this book right here. The Munsell Color Soil Charts. Soil Color Charts. This is a 
uh, publication mainly dedicated to geologists, okay, to analyze soil. But ceramics are made of soil and they're fired, they're cooked. So in the end, the nuances, the hues, the colors we find here, because as you can see, we have several dozens of colors. Not that many, you would imagine many more, but actually I have analyzed and described a lot of pottery coming from different contexts. What you can find here is perfectly sufficient. I mean, you have more than enough nuances, hues, colors to describe your pottery. Um, a lot of times people get the little fragment, the sherd, they put it here be below underneath in order to have a quick comparison and, and have it close to the color. As you can see, you have these holes in order to put the soil or in our case, a piece of shirt, a ceramic, as I was saying, to have a bare comparison. I don't think that works at all because it creates the sh a little shadow, the hole. It's better to have a little piece and put it right on top and trying to see it, to have a, a flat light and see when you find clearly uh, a matching type of, of color. We'll see this a little better afterwards when we're in, in, in the describing uh, phase. In any case, I did already give you a good idea of what this is used for. Besides this, uh, I would highly recommend to have a percussor, we could say. Something, a little piece of stone, a little piece of metal, something very hard to break a piece, a little piece of your sherds. A lot of people are going to say, what? You want to go and break sherds? Yes, a lot of times uh, it's a good idea to break just a little bit in order to have a precise reading of the paste, of the color especially, of the paste, but also the inclusions as we're going to see in a few minutes. So that's very useful. Clearly you're going to do a little bit of mess, so then you're going to have to clean. Always remember to keep everything tidy when you're doing this. Uh, plus another important instrument is a caliper classical caliper. Here is an image um, which is useful to measure the uh, edge of the, of the shirt. A lot of times it's not required. In other cases, it's better to have just an idea of the thickness of that uh, wall, of that shirt, of that piece of vase. When you have big, uh, big shirts, maybe sometimes whole vases, entire vases, complete, they're not fragmented, or sometimes when you just you can, you can understand by touching it that there isn't uh, a consistency in the thickness of your big shirt. At that point, you're going to need something like this, which is called a caliper gauge. We call it the dancer, la ballerina in Italian, but it's very useful because it, 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 you can measure something in the middle, okay, in the middle of a shirt or of a vase, while the caliper will measure only clearly the edge. So both of these are quite useful. Apart from this, I think these are the basic instruments. Clearly there are many more, then we're going to see in future videos how to draw pottery, how to take pictures and things like that, and then you're going to need clearly more instruments. But this is the, the main set we could say for this stage. Okay, Let's take a look now very quickly at what are the main voices adopted to describe a piece of pottery, a shirt. Here I have a pretty sophisticated, we could say, pretty complex um, uh, table I created for my doctoral thesis where I have several voices. Now, clearly, depending on the context, depending on, especially in the type of pottery of ceramics that you are finding and of the required detail of description, things may vary, okay? You're maybe going to find in some publications, for example, journals, monographies, books, just a few little voices like four or five or not even that describing pottery, okay? So this is very interchangeable. Things vary completely from one project to another. In any case, I will try to follow this because I put a lot of voices. So it'll give you a, there, you, can, you can double this easily. You can add even more. So there, there's no end, maybe we could say. In any case, here, this is a good summary of one of uh, the main types of voices, of uh, aspects you have to consider to describe pottery, okay? So we're going to go through these and try to understand what they involve. Okay. Uh, 
you're gonna see also the table appear slowly here next to me so you can understand better actually over here so uh, for example I in uh, created a, an internal numeration a number a sequence which is also always very useful in order to find the different shares to refer within the text so this is already something considering publication you're not going to find this in a database in the database instead you're going to find the second voice which is the inventory number which is very important so that's always something it's better to include a lot of publications don't have it I think it's a good idea then we have a chronology if you already know more or less the, the macroscopic chronology of that type of shirt you can insert it for example I did I have shirts from coming from the early Iron Age it's useful all to put some details of the context from which it's coming the the specific locus or the area the trench and things like that once again this is more telling us from where the shirt is coming it's not a direct description then I also inserted a personal typology uh, NW the nighty wear which I described and I practically isolated a, a series of types of shapes specific shapes so that's also something that you can create along the road but once again this is not something typical then we start to have something fundamental in uh, describing ceramics pottery shirts class by class we usually mainly mean if it's an open shape of any kind or a closed shape of any kind meaning from a bowl a plate that's the maximum aperture you could say all the way to a bottle for example or a jug or things like that so that's already important a lot of people just put open and closed uh, others like me put the the shape like for example here you can see jug or jar or as I was saying bowl or different types of other shapes but all mainly reconductible to an open or closed that's the macroscopic distinction okay then I have put a voice in uh, dedicated to the dimensions now I did this mainly for um, to describe whole vessels okay in complete pieces that's very useful you have to describe the the, the, the width the, the how much it's tall how much is wide um, possibly also the thickness of the walls and things like that but that I mean is something rare you're usually going to find sherds and at that point if it's a diagnostic type of sherd which simply means it has a rim or something very identifiable that clearly is reconducting that piece to a precise shape we already know okay or that can tell us exactly what type of shape through a, a drawing reconstruction for example but usually when we talk about diagnostics we're talking about sherds that have a rim at least so at that point it's very important here you see the diameter because if you have a piece of the rim you can have you can tell you can decide establish the diameter in fact another instrument that I forgot to put in the, in the in the kit of the describer is a diameter chart we could call it here you can see an example where you have different diameters pretty pretty wide diameters are all, all the way down to very small ones usually I would say from 5 all the way to 20 30 that's a good range and you can fastly and rapidly know the diameter of that shirt just putting the shirt on the piece of paper and finding the correct diameter okay we will do more of this types of description with physical elements showing examples so you can better understand in future videos now we're just doing a rapid overview of the theory in any case this is an important instrument to establish the diameter as I was saying then I added the voice size which is something clearly subjective you have to say you have to establish a range what is small what is big what is large because clearly this is completely as I was saying uh, not objective it's subject it's something more connected to what you are finding in that uh, context so for example you're going to establish that uh, a small vessel hence a small diameter of the rim is between 5 or 10 centimeters but it's something very tricky because maybe you have a small uh, mouth 
of that phase. For example, five centimeters. But maybe the phase has a huge profile. So it's not always that uh, important. Uh, and a lot of people, in fact, don't put that unless they have uh, a complete vessel. So they know exactly the size of that vessel. Determining the size only from the mouth and the rim and the diameter is not that precise. It's not the correct way to go. It's an indication, okay? Because usually the diameter does tell us more or less how big is the vase. But it can't be considered as 100% grounded and solid. Okay, our next step is more dedicated to the morphology, the physical characteristics of our shirt or our pot, our vessel. And in this case, we're going to take a look at the body profile, the general profile of the body. The body, as I said, we're going to go more in depth what we intend by body of a vessel. In any case, let's say that it goes from below the neck, also known as shoulder, and how it develops the, 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 the true body, the, the following part, all the way down to the base. We could say the part between the neck and the base, more or less. And at that point, it's very helpful to see if there is some kind of inclination. Because a lot of times, we can find something called a carina, where you have a very, um, we could say, harsh angle, okay? An acute angle. Something that changes its direction abruptly which creates a carina. We'll go more in depth in this, don't worry. It's just to give you an example. I mean, a lot of times you're just gonna have a, 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 a oval shape, a globular, globular shape, something more, uh, more round, something a little more sinuous. It depends. In any case, this is a good index of uh, the main shape of the body. And in the most cases, it's clearly gonna be oval or uh, spherical. Then we have the rim neck profile, which I think it's, it's useful, not just the neck. Sometimes you only have the neck, but then it's not a fully diagnostic piece. And you have to simply describe the curve done, created by the lip, which is the outer part of the rim, and its neck before it hits the shoulder of the vase, okay? And that, that profile is something you must report in this here. Uh, for example, I, I, you can see here uh, flared. Uh, another term we're going to encounter is whole mouth. When you have a whole mouth, you don't have a neck. You just have the whole of the mouth, which is directly connected to the shoulder. There are various types, as you can imagine. Okay, let's proceed. Then we have something quite present in various types of descriptions, is the rim direction which is usually uh, described as inverted, going outwards, or inverted, going inwards, okay? Which is usually connected also to the concept of open and closed uh, class, class of, of, of vessels. But that's not always the case, because you can have an open shape with an inverted uh, rim. So that's, that's not necessarily connected, okay? Always bear in mind, there, there's always amendments. There's always that little case that goes out of the rule. In any case, this is just to describe the direction of the rim. Okay, then to conclude this description of the rim, we also have the shape itself of the rim. If it's tapered, if it's round, if it's square, all the, all the different types you can find. It's, a lot of times you're going to find yourself inventing a term because you don't have anything to compare it. You're not finding that precise term you have in your mind in other publications and just go ahead. I mean, it, if it's clear, if that term is clear, self-explanatory, then go ahead. No, no problem, really, no problem. Okay, after the shape of the rim, a very important uh, voice, which I'm finding less and less in publications, is the fabric texture, which gives you, at a glance, the paste, how uh, coarse or fine is that type of matrix of the paste of, the, of that shirt or of that base. Here, as I said before, comes handy to break a piece off in order to clearly understand what's inside, as we're going to see afterwards, the inclusions, or a general overview, a description of the paste. 
of the texture and in fact usually we have medium medium fine fine very fine coarse very coarse and this is important i mean because when it's very fine you already have an idea of that specific type of vase when it's very coarse and badly fired badly cooked you're gonna have a completely different type of vase so once again i think this is an important voice then something quite rare but i inserted it is the firing intensity which can help people to understand better uh, it's another piece of information that you are adding in your description to understand better that production in that specific context so how much uh, this specific in this case shirt is exposed to fire and also the the amount of heat the intensity in fact i described it like it's medium sometimes it's under fired where you can find a gray or even black section inside the shirt which uh, indicates a bad type of cooking a low type of temperature and firing or maybe it's very very exposed very cooked overcooked uh, which uh, a very strong type of, uh, of heating um, hit <laughs> cooked the vessel making it a little more green in that direction so this is uh, something useful but not very present actually then we have something more very important that it's almost always in, uh, included which is the inclusions which i mentioned before there are specific analysis to determine exactly what are the inclusions of uh, a piece of shirt clearly a chemical mineral analysis but that's a step forward and it's quite expensive we are just doing determining the inclusions by the eye okay it's something i know it's not very precise but it does give a good indication of what you're seeing and usually you describe uh, if there's chaff which means if there are pieces of vegetable inclusions or the type or the kind of mineral inclusions sometimes you can easily determine if there's quartz for example or uh, uh, the, the, the so-called ever-present mica which is a little shiny or um, just calcareous types of particles like like gypsum or things like that uh, sand or generally generally speaking a lot of time we just talk about grit which means small type very small fine gravel if that is present or not and you're going to describe it as we said before in the fabric texture how big how coarse or how fine these are okay and um this is as i said a general uh, description of what implies the voice inclusions then we have three sections dedicated to the colors the outside color the inside color and the section color in here we must use this I briefly described it before I don't think we have to go through it again you just have to find the matching color let's go more towards ceramic colors more reddish or brownish you have to find the matching one and then you look at the number here and the description and at that point you report it in your database okay it's easy it's easy once it's a little you have to fiddle around you have to put this on the side take it back find the right one find the code here on the on the on the side write it down it's time consuming absolutely this is the most time consuming part of pottery description unfortunately let's proceed then we have the surface treatment i did, divided it in out and in because sometimes you practically have almost very rarely something inside a vessel a, 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 un, unless it's more of an open shape or a plate where you have the decoration clearly in the inner part but usually when we're talking more of closed vessels it's on the outer part and here you you can describe what you're finding not decoration okay here are the treatments and here we're going to go much more in depth in the following video what's a slip what it, what is burnishing and all these things okay i'm not going to explain them now then we have decoration where there are motifs uh, usually geometric if they're very simple or maybe you have figures or maybe you have animals or maybe you have something in on a relief molded inc incisions or excisions we're also going to go and analyze these terms in the next video in any case all the any type of decoration even painted decoration would go in this voice and finally i added also the voice 
if the vessel, if the shirt, it's not that, uh, sometimes it's difficult to establish, but not always. It depends if it's handmade or made on a potter's wheel or the so-called tournette, which is a very slow type of potter wheel. In another video, clearly I will help you more and understand how to identify these characteristics, okay? We're gonna, go, we're gonna get a piece of, 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 of a true shirt, ancient shirt, and trying to do a, a description so we can understand better in practice how to do this. Okay, guys, apart from this, also a good idea is to weigh the shirts you are describing at a certain point, okay, of that specific context. The amount of kilos, of, of, of pounds, whatever you're using, that's something a lot of people forget, but it's useful to, uh, to give an idea because the number of shirts is not telling any, anything. If it's a whole vase and it's been broken in, in, in 100 shirts, you're not saying something anything new because it could be 100, you can just walk on it and then there are 200, so that's not an index. An index instead is the weight because clearly you can immediately understand how much pottery was present there regardless of the number of shirts, clearly. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions, go ahead. I know this is a complex type of subject. We just touched the surface. We're gonna more, go more in depth in further videos, I promise. Once again, in the comments or at our email, ask at camnist.org. Thank you again for watching and what can I say? Understanding our past defines our present and projects us in the future. Thank you. Hi guys, if you want to discover more about archaeology and our ancient past from a different perspective, make sure to click on the Camnus logo here below. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you will never miss an episode and join the archaeological community in search of the truth.